Hey guys, my name is Zach Hansen. I'm an extension plant pathologist uh, with University of Tennessee Extension. Um, I work on fruits and vegetables a lot and I work a lot with commercial growers, but today um, we're gonna kind of gear this video towards teaching home gardeners and master gardeners how to better diagnose cucurbit downy mildew, um, which is a, a disease that we see every year in our cucurbits in Tennessee. We wanna kind of talk about what to look for and how to diagnose this um, in your own garden. And so the first thing that you look for in uh, cucumbers especially is early on, and that's what I've got in front of me here, um, you'll have leaf lesions that are just a bit yellow on the leaf surface. And it can be hard to detect at first. Um, it'll show up as just a little bit of leaf yellowing. And then if you turn that leaf over, especially in the morning when it's damp or there's been some dew, um, underneath that, with the aid of a hand lens, you can look for um, diagnostic spores. Now, the reason I say diagnostic is because the spore structures are how you tell apart downy mildew from other common foliar diseases in cucurbits. Um, and so it's very difficult to see with the naked eye, but with the aid of a hand lens or a jeweler's loop like I have here, um, you can look at the leaf underside and see if you can see those diagnostic spore structures. So the way to use a hand lens properly is to hold the lens up very close to your eye and then bring the specimen towards it. And you have to hold the specimen very close to the hand lens in order to see this. So that would look something like this. So you're holding that up very close. And what that looks like when you're looking at it this way, it almost just looks like a little bit of dirt. They're just sort of dark specks in there. And if you have the angular yellow lesions and you're seeing that on the leaf underside, that is a, an excellent preliminary diagnosis for downy mildew. But in order to know for sure if you have downy mildew, you really need to take that to somewhere that has um, a dissecting microscope and you can view it under higher power and get a definitive diagnosis of those spore structures. So you can call your county extension office, see if you can bring some samples in and get a definitive diagnosis. And if you're able to do that, we can then update um, an important cucurbit downy mildew occurrence map that we keep track of um, where we report outbreaks of this disease, which is important for commercial growers to know so they can um, evaluate their crops. Now, initially, as I said, the leaf might appear mostly healthy. This would be earlier in the season when downy is just arriving, mostly green. You might just see a couple of those light yellow spots, and that's when it's a little more difficult to diagnose. You have to be scouting pretty carefully to see that. As the disease advances, you get more of those yellow spots and they start to turn brown like we see in this leaf. Um, and even a little bit of blighting where they start to kind of dry out and those lesions are coming together and blighting the leaf. And still, as the disease advances further, you'll start to see symptoms like this. And eventually it will defoliate the crop. And this is, this is why we care because as it spreads through the crop, it defoliates the crop and leaves the fruit vulnerable to sun scald, but also you're not creating uh, photosynthesis anymore, so you're no longer developing fruit. One other thing I will point out is not all cucurbits are affected equally by downy mildew. Some are more impacted than others. In Tennessee, um, we tend to see downy mildew show up first on cucumbers and muskmelon. And it does look a little bit different on muskmelon, but a lot of the same things apply. Um, you get these yellowing spots on the leaves, um, the spots tend to be angular also. And again, if you turn that leaf over with the aid of a hand lens, you'll see those dark spore structures. Um, so that's what we look for with downy mildew. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to myself or your county extension office for more information. Thanks for watching.